A long time ago in a galaxy almost far, far away, three makers unite in order to share and discuss their knowledge. Join us as we light the spark that brings back your childhood in the almost Star Wars <laughs> show. Hey everyone, welcome to the almost Star Wars show. I am Ron Kanyama, also known as CG Artist. How you doing, guys? I'm Dennis. I'm with the Black Market Outpost. Hey, guys. I'm James. I'm from the Rebel Base Build. And we have a special guest today. I'm Cameron Ferguson. I'm also known as the Sketchy Guy Nevada. We've got some questions for you. I think Dennis had some pretty interesting questions to, so that everyone can get to know who you are and what you do. First thing we'd all like to know is I'm sure you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am uh, a very old uh, person coming out in art. I started drawing when I was five years old, and I haven't stopped. Um, recent advancements in technology um, have allowed me to spread myself. Wow, that sounded really good um, to a much larger audience very quickly, and uh, seems to be taken up. So let me ask you about that. Five years mm -hmm. old, obviously, you were pen and paper when you started out. You prefer the digital more than the pen and paper nowadays. Wow. Um, I can tell you I flip-flop. I go back and forth. If I want something finished and I want it mm -hmm. done quick as, as, you know, when I'm working on stuff, say for like you guys, um, I do it all digital because it's just okay. very, very fast. Yeah. I can go right. from a sketch to a finished work in a fraction of the time. Um, I, I worked a lot initially um, when I was in high school, I was being published by uh, LA Times as well as a newspaper and the time involved just to do that stuff in pencil and then to go back and do it in ink was is just way too long. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't function in that slow mode. But if I'm just sketching, which I do a lot of, um, yeah, I don't mind doing it on paper, pencil, no matter where I'm at. And uh, I'll tell you the only drawback to doing that in my book, it, besides the time, is how much paper you accumulate. Right. I'm sure, that's got to get to a point where where do I keep it all? Right, exactly. Yeah. And actually, um, we moved everything out of our house recently, and I found tons of work that I've even forgotten that I've drawn. So, and really good stuff. I was just like, oh, wow, that's where that was. Don't, I don't remember drawing a cartoon about um, creative writing in Sumeria where someone's slapping a chicken into a thing of clay, but hey, I did. So there we go. Right. Interesting you bring that up because my next question is do you consider yourself an artist or a cartoonist? Uh, so great question. <laughs> I am not an artist. My daughter is an artist. Okay. Um, I am an illustrator or a cartoonist. And I think the, the, the way to discern that is I can't recreate something that somebody's done or recreate your face perfectly because it's already perfect. But, um, <laughs> my, my daughter definitely can. She can take a picture of you and recreate it exactly the way it is. That's wow. art to me. Yeah. Wow. That's tough um, too. Even, even though both of them are very interpretive, you know, where um, right. you know, she could take your, she could take an image and then, you know, combine it with another image and make a whole new image and tell a story that way. Um, I think in, in, I, I don't have the patience for it. So I just, I have to knock it out fast. Yeah. I mean, I think your cartooning style is just fantastic. Thank you. Oh, I love it. It's amazing. And if you notice, it changes fast, too, because I could draw you six or seven times and all of them will kind of look like you, but there's six or seven different versions. Right. It's just weird. Yeah. See, I like how fast you do all the drawings, too. Like, we'll give you some creative feedback and then all of a sudden now something's changed or, hey, I want a cape, you know, which I actually did ask for a cape and and. <laughs> Two minutes later, there I am, cape all drawn out, rendered and everything, which is just amazing that you can pump that stuff out so fast. And for the, yeah. for the viewers, for the viewers, we haven't really explained, have we? Because Cameron, you've done uh, caricatures of, of all of us, haven't you? And, you know, I know for myself, yeah. you, you've done my my logo for my Rebel Base build as well. Not yes. the logo, but the character that I use uh, yeah. with a huge forehead. I mean... <laughs> Uh, but it's really good and, and uh, you know people say it looks just like you I, I try not to get too offended by that but it means that you've done your job well it's great it's it's yeah it's it's flattery it's supposed to be 
you, you, you exaggerate certain parts of it, but if I take it too far, then all of a sudden you just don't look like you, you look alien. And in some cases that might be a good thing. I don't know. Just depends. <laughs> but yeah, I started, um, I think I started with Brian. Um, and then Brian uh, kind of connected me with James and then it yeah. just kind of took off. It was kind of like a, an old shampoo commercial or something. And it's Brian from the smugglers yeah. room, correct? Yes. Yes. Brian. Ah, okay. Yeah. I, I, I think I saw him in a little Brian. millennium Falcon flying around. So it, it, it was, it was uh, a speeder on tattooing. Ah, yes. Okay. That's what it was. Got yeah. it. It's all appreciated big time. So we can't thank you enough for drawing us. And then Absolutely. of course we show Absolutely. the wives like, look, look what I look. That's me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's pretty cool. So <laughs> I'm wearing a cape. Yeah, I'm wearing a cape. Finally. My kid, yeah. My kids <laughs> think it's amazing that I'm on YouTube as a cartoon. <laughs> they do. <laughs> you're, you're just amazing. You're on YouTube. They like enough, James. Right? They like James's cartoon better than mine, but still, it's up there. <laughs> because the forehead is so accurate. I've got a question for you, Cameron. Um, okay. Have you? I mean, first of all, your art is brilliant. It's it's amazing, and um, I try and study how you do it because I do a little bit of digital drawing myself. Nowhere near as good as as you, and I have to copy my stuff. I have to start with something. I can't just pluck it out of the. Uh, and there's no way could I ever go for likeness either and then make it an exaggerated likeness and ha still have somebody know that that's them. But this is where my question is going. Have you ever drawn a caricature of somebody and then completely offended them? Yes. Yeah, yeah I drew a guy was... once with a really big forehead. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I mean, see what you did there. <laughs> so, <laughs> there there's, a, there's a weird secret to it. And somebody told me this a long, 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 I'm not that old, um, a long time ago. But um, I've discovered that if, if, you, if you get paid for it, generally speaking, people are like, oh my gosh, that's totally me. But if they're not paid for it, or you're not paid for it, they're not paying for it. All of a sudden, they have a lot of critique to give you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I used to sit around in these, we'll call them cantinas, and um, draw people. And they would, you know, hey, can you, someone would see and say, hey, can you draw me? I'll buy you a drink or, uh, you know, whatever. And there's no way I could keep up with the drink. So, you know, I just <laughs> had this credit at the bar. But if I just, the first one, inevitably, I draw one person and send it to them and be like, oh, can you make this bigger? Can you do this differently? You know, my women are always, this certain part of my body is not big enough or, you know, <laughs> whatever the case may be. But um, it was always the first drawing where I was kind of soliciting for free drinks versus, you know, where they were giving me the free drinks. So I would draw them. It's weird. Fantastic idea. Think I can go into a cantina and build stuff for free drinks? Yeah, no, Dennis, yeah. Dennis, you could just go and draw stick men of people and get free drinks. Let's try See, that. There you go. Uh, I may try that. Actually, you probably could. <laughs> Dennis could just walk in and smile, and people go, "Let me buy you a drink." There you go. Yeah. You're really nice. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> hey, question for you: um, Have you dabbled <laughs> into 2D animation at all? Oh, yeah. I'm going to defer that to uh, Mr. James. Animation's his realm, not mine. <laughs> yeah. I've tried it. I'm not that great. I've done some, um, you know, I'll say GIFs. I know that's a big controversy and it always will be. But I've done a <laughs> few of those. Um, uh, I haven't done any like full scale animation. I've always wanted to. And mm -hmm. when I do, Ron, you're going to be voicing one of those. I'm just, it's going to be out there. Nice. Your, nice. your logo has a bit of animation, right? The winky eye. And, and the smile we just stop motion yeah, that's isn't cool. it? it's it's literally three or four pictures that i just video yeah. slap together mm, try yeah. to get it in sync with the music and very rudimentary but yeah and, that, and that's that's animation man isn't it it's just not 24 frames a second it's like three or four but yes same same concept but you should yep. you should do that you should take that to the next <laughs> level yeah, yeah. well it's in it, it's interesting because um I actually tried to get into uh, Pasadena Art College uh, back in the day, and that was owned by Disney. And oh, wow. um, didn't get in at the time. Um, and the reason they told me was my style was too uh, established in high school. 
Um, my it looks nothing. What I draw now looks nothing like it did in high school. But the uh, person there said, "Yeah, you're too established. We can't we can't teach you from here." Wow. And then somebody directed me down to their archives to um, watch some of the videos down there. And that's when I ran into. I don't know if you guys remember um, Sick and Twisted cartoons. Like the they used to tour. I'm showing my age, I guess. They would tour um, colleges and show these off the wall um animations beavis and butthead was one of them ren and ah. stimpy was one of them um but this is before they were on tv and um i got to see some of this stuff uh in the disney archive wow. <laughs> at pasadena well the pasadena art uh pasadena art college archive which was like i said opened by disney so it was just that kind of opened my eyes and i kind of wanted to do it but i don't mm. know it's it the the time involved i just you know, be really excited about it over time. Yeah. But um, I, I, I don't know. I, it may be a challenge that I take up. James. I think what's, I think what's interesting though, when you're talking about um, skills and, and the different fields people go into, because I, I teach digital media as my day job and that involves 2D, 3D, all types, all types of different animation. But you find that learners um, or students will, be only interested in one of those things. It's very rare that you find someone that wants to be an animator and and an artist, you know, and a modeler. You you, you get people that just want to specialize in those areas and, and won't really be swayed from that because that's, that's what they're doing. So the story you're telling isn't that, you know, it's not that rare. Well, and the, and the other thing you guys know, I did comic book. Uh, yeah. Well, two of them. We're still, we're, we're working on several others, but nice. that came out of a challenge. Somebody just saying, well, when are you going to finally do a comic book? And I'm like, I'm not that good. And then he presented me with other comic books that were really poorly drawn and they were popular comic books. And he said, you do better than this. Just let's right. do it. And so as a challenge, I, I drew a four page comic book and then that actually became an eight page. And then that became a 16 page second edition, second issue. And now I think we're up to 68 pages on on just one issue the third issue so nice. it's, it's going fast yeah. but like yeah. like ron said you're so quick at, at what you do you know mm -hmm. i know we as we as a group have uh suggested some some things and you know you five minutes later you've you've dropped the draft yeah it's fully it's, rendered uh, and everything amazing yeah. stuff really so cool. that means if we challenge you to do an animation then are you gonna are you gonna pick up pick up that challenge and do it? Probably will now. No, Thanks, no Rob. pressure. <laughs> let's add another layer to it. Let's get the let's get the viewers to drop some comments and some there suggestions. Wow. What the challenge yeah. could be for you? What What am I gonna animate? <laughs> your comic, or at least a scene from your comic. That would be a good start. Well, Something there is small. a scene. There is a scene that has uh, some makers in it. In the the new comic. And it was really funny because we ended up doing a complete rewrite. We're in the middle of doing a complete rewrite of the third uh, issue. And we're at that point where we're like trying to connect certain dots and taking stuff out. Like you would as a filmmaker, like this doesn't really work here. Mm -hmm. We may have to toss that out. And, you know, these 18 pages, yeah, just toss them. Um, but I told them, absolutely not. We're not we're not losing the makers. So you guys will be in the third issue. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you in advance. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're, uh, we're on an almost Star Wars uh, show. So you've obviously got an interest in Star Wars because you, you seem to know a little bit about it. Um, yeah. What do you enjoy? What do you enjoy drawing the most? What franchise? What kind of? Oh my uh, gosh! You know what? I I um, years ago I liked drawing Star Trek. Sorry. <gasps> Um, no, Trek's cool. We love Trek. Now, then, then that kind of switched over to Star Wars. I want to say, ah, uh, maybe uh, uh, Empire was the probably where it kind of switched because you know you have to draw you know, tauntauns, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, that's kind of where it kind of flipped over. But um, just a few years ago, I drew uh, Boba Fett and uh, Spock cartoon where uh, they're in a cantina and and spock's in there ordering a fruity drink and boba fett's just down the bar from him and he's he ain't got a 
beer in his hand or something. And he turns to the bartender and says, what kind of place are you running here? And that's, that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, I don't, I don't follow Star Trek. I think it's a nice utopian thing. I just mm-hmm. think Star Wars is a much more real universe. Yeah. Yeah. I think the borrowed universe is what we're going to end up doing anyway. It's not going to be, oh, we're going to throw everything away and everything will be sparkly and new and stuff like that. Gotcha. Hey, so question for you. Um, when you're drawing, do you use any type of reference? Occasionally do. Yes. Um, when I did, um, just as an example, I did uh, Brian's dad, the uh, junkyard Jedi. And um, there's a sand crawler in that one. So he's riding a sand crawler and I needed a picture of a sand crawler to get it just right. Ah. Mm. Yeah. But generally speaking, eh, you know, I might do a couple of test, you know, sketches. And then from there, yeah, I just kind of go with it. Cool, cool. And so you do all this on your iPad, right? You don't use like a tablet on a computer? (laughs) I was sent a tablet for my computer and I couldn't do the uh, separation where I'm Mm. looking at the screen and drawing down below. I I Ah. just couldn't do it. I I failed terribly. So you need one of those tablets that's the actual, like a secondary screen. And then you can draw (laughs) right on the screen just like your iPad then. I would love a Cintiq Companion. That thing would be my dream. And James, you know what that is, right? Yeah, yeah. The beautiful army. Yep. And I, I have a friend who's an animator. Actually, he's related to me distant. Um, and uh, it, it's really funny because he, he talks about, and this kind of goes with the animation thing, is he talks about, he, he draws amazing things, but it takes him forever to draw. Um, and I mean, he worked for, you know, blue sky and stuff like that. He did, he did oh, Rio, nice. he did, uh, Epic. I don't know if you remember that movie. He even did the 3d, uh, peanuts. Um, and we had conversations and he's just like, uh, you're too fast. You, you couldn't do what I do. You're too fast because it's great. I wish I could do what you do, but you're too fast. I can't, I can't keep up. With you. So it's kind of, what do I want to do? And I want to be that kind of artist, which I do. Uh, but I don't want to give up on, you know, what's going on now. So uh, I'm good being an illustrator. That brings us to our first topic. And I'm going to discuss Phil Tippett. For those who don't know who he is, um, you've seen his work big time. You've seen it in Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, uh, the Robocop 1 and 2 series, um, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. Uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I think, is the last thing he worked on before his new um, short, which is called Mad God. Yeah, so Phil Phil Tippett is a bit of a hero of mine, at least, um, and no doubt you guys as well. He's, his work is astounding, as you said, Ron. He's he's done lots of, you know, um, signature movies um, and childhood movies and all that kind of thing. Not going to go down the whole reflecting on when we were kids again, but um, right. you know, he he orchestrated many of those movies and. He was a pioneer and, and still is actually. You know, he he's he he's had there's a really interesting documentary out about him and how he uh progressed through the the, the ever-changing special effects industry and, and how you know his art of stop motion, uh, which is essentially we touched on this earlier, is, is essentially for those that don't know, it's um it's when you take a series of pictures of um an object, a character, a vehicle, a scene. And every time you take a, a picture, you you move it slightly, um, and you do that between well, the average is twelve times for every for every second or, or of movie, or twenty four times every second because that's how many frames there are in a, in a film. And if you play those back, it looks like things are moving. And the reason why you get that staccato feel to uh, some of the, the stop motion animation in the original movies and movies of that time is because you're they're flicker books. You're basically flicking from one, yes. one scene to the next. So you're not getting the motion blur between each image. Mm-hmm. Having said that, Phil was at the top of his game when he did the Torn Torns and everything else in the Star Wars mm-hmm. films. Uh, he, and he was maxing out the frames per second and was coming up some really incredible um, you know, results, the movies that we love. And moving forward, when it got to Jurassic Park, uh, he, he was all out going to stop motion these dinosaurs he, he, that was what he was going to do and, and in fact he he invented the next version of stop motion called go motion 
which was um, the next version of, of uh, this kind of technique where every in between every frame, he would add a blurred frame so that it looked like it was you know, pure, beautiful, smooth animation. And there's a video which we can link to later or maybe show the footage of a T-Rex that he animated in this way. And, you know, for me, it, it looks like it looks as good as CGI in terms of the motion, but mm -hmm. looks so much better than CGI because you're looking at a real object lit properly, you know. Um, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on which way you look at it, Steven Spielberg at the time decided to go with CG, which in hindsight, you know, was a, was a, a good move because that, that totally blew the, the CG uh, industry up. And um, we've had so many good things from that and a fair few bad things, actually. But yeah. But I think at the time, Phil, when people like Phil Tippett, I mean, I'm not speaking for Phil, this is only my observations, um, he kind of struggled with that change and, and felt like, in his words, felt like things were, you know, he, that, that art form was, was disappearing. Mm. Um, but during all of that, he was working on this film, as, as uh, Ron just mentioned, called Mad God, um, which is insane when you look into it. it it's, uh, he started it a long time ago and was working on it behind the scenes. And it was essentially, he was using the go motion technique. So it looks phenomenal, but it was the stuff of nightmares. I mean, this is <laughs> just... This it just is. looks like yeah, hell. it is bizarre. <laughs> it's crazy, right? You've you've seen it. I think I linked to you guys. You've seen some of this stuff, haven't you? Yes. Um, and I'll put know, the what, link what, in the description as well, so everyone can get a glimpse of this. What did you think when you first looked at that, Ron? I know you you were like, wow. I was just blown away. It was like pure eye candy. I, as soon as it started, I mean, I already knew who Phil Tippett was or is, and when I saw it, I just was like, yep, typical. In fact. What it really reminds me of is a video for uh, the band Tool. If you've seen some of their videos, they, it's that yes. same style, that, same, that same gritty. Style, yes. Yeah, it's like a gritty, dark, just, like, you know. Like you're living in a nightmare, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. but yet oh. it's beautiful at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's the key thing. It, like, like all of his animation, it's beautiful. You know, it's like he can see it before... It before it's done uh, and you know Cameron you you were talking about this in terms of digital the difference between digital and uh, traditional animation or, or, or at least drawing you know within in a computer you can pretty much you know undo your mistakes and push forward and see how things are going to look a little bit easier virtually but you know Phil Tippett and, and those masters that do this stuff they don't know what's coming next they're not they're not able to do a pre-vis what, what they are doing is pre-vis you know that, that is the that is the art form it, it, if they haven't moved the character or, or press shoot on the camera it doesn't exist yet so for me it's always fascinating to see how they make things move so fluidly um yeah. it's it's incredible and it is an art form it, it truly is and and i'm blown away by it and when i saw that the the mad god um movie is about to, about to release and, and there's a, there's quite a bit of footage online you know it's uh I think some people have said it's not hugely coherent, but it's more about the art form. It's more about the looks of the thing, the experimental way in which it's done. It, it's just amazing. And, you know, I encourage everybody to have a look at that and uh, check it out. It's yeah, there, there was there was almost a point where we weren't going to get that mad god. Back during that Jurassic Park time, he yeah. got pretty sick. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if James was referring to the same documentary that I watched, but I think yeah. here in the States, Vice runs it one of those channels on the our cable network but i mean he was to the point where he was considering suicide yeah he was taking it he, badly he really yeah he really was convinced that his career or his his line of work was over with it was never wow. coming back didn't they use him with the cgi department for Jurassic yeah Park so too? so the yeah. issue they were having was all these cgi guys were you know designers computer designers they didn't know pictures or how it should move or motion or this and that so he was kind of brought in to basically orchestrate hmm. what the cgi guys were designing yeah hmm. which was good because it it kind of reinforced the need for for his skills you know even yeah, though he doing animation he was still able to sort of say look that's not how a t-rex walks this is how a t-rex walks you know, right right and and uh, together, it's it's kind of like a symbiosis, right? Right. Yeah. So they almost use his work for the reference. At one point, he was trying to make uh, stop motion animation for schools. Yeah. In other words, you know, they would play his video and hey, this is a T Rex. This is what a T Rex does. 
but a lot of the schools were saying that it was a bit too scary. That's it. <laughs> and he's like, it's not scary. It's realistic. But then the schools come back to him and say, yeah, but if just one kid is scared, we can't show it. Yeah. And then Barney even was it, born. Yeah. Exactly. Even though it's cool and this and that, but you know, just can't, doesn't work that way. Yeah. That's why you need people like you, Cameron, that can come along and stylize these things, make them <laughs> less exactly. scary, but just as awesome. Put a smile yeah, on that- a mean dinosaur. And a splash yeah, yeah, of I purple. <laughs> <laughs> I can't come up with the uh, lovely theme song. No, it's, it's probably mind. probably best that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you should do? You should go and get your iPad and, and your pencil right now, right? And we should challenge you to to paint or to sketch a, a dinosaur, a friendly, happy-looking <laughs> dinosaur. See, I would, but... you. see how long that will take you. I, I would, but we're using my iPad. Ah, Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was actually originally thinking that while we were doing the show, I would draw something and then put it out on YouTube. This is what I was doing when I was on the show. But um, yeah, since we're using the iPad, it's it's eye candy now. How would you do that, though? How would you take something scary and make it mm-hmm. not scary, but still not lose what it, what, what it was to begin with? How would you take a T-Rex, for example, and make it look not as It's as all, exa- all exaggeration. Um, mm. increasing the size of the head, reducing the size of the body, making it, you could do it the other way. Um, but I think that would make it, <laughs> it would take away from the, the, the meanness of it. Um, I'm sure the dinosaur yeah. would be happy, longer arms. <laughs> yeah, he, he can, he can clap. That'd be good. Um, but yeah, I think the first thing I do immediately is, I mean, with a T-Rex, yeah, make the head bigger. Um, when you do that though, you'd have to offset with the tail, the tail would have to be bigger. So it'd be balanced. And then the body smaller. Is that because of the personification of, uh, like babies and, and younger forms? Mm-hmm. So with, yeah. with obviously babies' heads are huge in comparison to their body. Is it, does that make it look cuter? Is that, is that how you sort of break that? Are you trying to get at your big forehead drawing again? <laughs> 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 wow it it works because i'm cute so yeah um no but yeah seriously that that's a great observation is um uh, they do that a lot in anime too they'll design characters based off of uh specific animals or babies this proportions just because of that i mean chibis are there because they're little Mm -hmm. babies that act like full-size adults yeah, and then they also show emphasis on the eyes. Now, not not just the anime eye, but I mean, in the chibi style, the eyes are yeah. like extra, extra large and, mm. and lots of shine in there, you know, so cutesy with the little tiny eyebrow and a really small mouth. It, it ends up being kind of like those Funko Pop. Ah, yes. Because yeah. you know, the bigger heads, that's why they're popular is because, oh, you know, I really like Phasma, but she's really, oh, wait, this is cute. You know, it's like, all right, now I get her with a big head. It's like having a little friend. Let's discuss something that a lot of Star Wars fans are going to remember, and that is Shadows of the Empire. It was an incredible game that started off as a game for the Nintendo 64, and then it just blew up from there. In fact, one would think if they didn't know that there was an actual motion picture for this, you know, like a real (laughs) movie, and it had everything in place to be that james i think you've got a you got an n64 don't you you can hear me rustling it right <laughs> it's just it happens to have one and the game and the game <laughs> this this game was my sole reason for purchasing this console same as, here yeah as yeah. all the consoles i've purchased have been the main reasons because of the star wars game yep but yep. what a game though hey uh from start to finish the the score everything it was <sighs> just it was fascinating. Awesome. No. Have, you, have, have we all played it? Dennis, have you played mm-hmm. Shadows of the Empire? Uh-oh, yeah. you're going to have to get an so, emulator. I don't, I don't video game at all, guys. I, don't, I couldn't oh. tell you any video game I've ever played. Oh, so I'm not, yeah, that's not fine. Does. That's the audio book is out there. In fact, you, the found book, the, yeah. um, you found the so-called motion picture on YouTube. Yeah, the um, book I looked at Dead. I, I watched that pic- motion picture that's out there. Yeah, and you know what? I was While I was watching that. that <laughs> yeah, I, while I was watching it, I was thinking of you, Cameron. I was like, hey, I wonder if he put his spin on that, how would it look? Because um, some of the artwork, you know, it's obviously taken from just like a little bit of everything. And they've used kind of yeah. a, a yeah. rotoscope sort of technique where they draw over live action, uh, like mm-hmm. a live action frame. 
maybe move it from left to right slowly with the music and the narration in the background. And I just mm. thought it just seems like right now, I feel like with the Clone Wars animated series and Bad Batch and all, I, I feel like they could make a full animated series for Shadows. And the I mean, true fans would go crazy over that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. The problem they're going to have now is getting a lot of that to fit into canon because of how far they've gone with what's out there. But yeah, yeah. But prior, I feel like prior to these Disney movies, they probably could have pulled it off no problem and it would have fit have. right in. Yeah, they would have to do something where they say, uh, kind of like the, the show 24, the following events happened between Empire and... Zero. Right, right. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was interesting to think about how this Shadows of the Empire franchise edition came about because it was, um, it was released in 96 and it, it was because they were trying to renew interest, I think, in Star Wars. <laughs> and, and at the time, in all intents and purposes, it was canon, okay? It, it was, was meant yes. to be... A, a fully fledged Star Wars experience sanctioned by Mr. Lucas himself. You know, there's a soundtrack to this. There was a game, there was comics and novels, everything but the film, you know? Right. Um, and it, it was quite, quite an amazing thing when, when, you, when you think about that campaign, how it, it was a multimedia campaign. I think the, the first of its like, actually, yeah. maybe, there was, maybe there was a few other uh, franchises that tried it, but... Certainly, as far as I can remember, there's a big deal about the fact that it was being released on multiple platforms at once as if the film had been right. out and this was all the franchise, you know. Yeah. So it, it's without getting into that debate about what's canon and what's not. And, you know, Disney can say what they want to say because they own the rights to it. Um, but at the time, in, in all intents and purposes, that was the, the an installment of Star Wars for, for everybody to enjoy. And the score... Is yeah. I mean, I talk about music a lot in the movies because music's my thing. I, you know, I play and write myself, but the score is brilliant. Joel McNeely, I think, um, and he took he took cues from from Williams, of course. You know, using mm -hmm. the, the, m many of the themes, but so many of the themes were, were were new and really told a story. And they were in the game as well. So I, I mm -hmm. you know, before I had this the CD, the compact disc. Uh, I already knew the tracks because they, they were on the N64, which I plagued to death. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The game was cutting edge too. I mean, for the time, we look at it now going, you know, the, just the graphics, but the gameplay was revolutionary. And then throwing in the soundtrack, I don't think that was done before that game, was it? Where they actually had a full-blown soundtrack in a no. game that wasn't, you know... I yeah, know, I believe you're right. I remember reading something about that to where they actually had to have Nintendo add more memory to the game to be able mm. to fit a soundtrack up until that point. It was all beeps and bops. Yeah. I think they had to go from eight to 12 to be able to get that soundtrack on that video game. And then there's the Kenner figures, right? Cause they, they also release right. figures as if it, again, as yes. if it was a film, you know, yes. I, I've got a few of them. I, I didn't, I didn't get many, but I got the little speeder mm. guy on the yeah. swoop, the swoop bike. Um, so the Kenner figures are very, very much available, and they're a very, very reasonable price. Hmm. I don't think they ever did too good in the stores. You know, in the past, I've watched you know other YouTube channels or videos about that stuff. And there was a particular guy I was watching who happened to, was actually a rep back in that time, and they put those uh, figures out there, and four to six months later, they ended up taking them all back. No, oh, well, wow. the stores Ooh. just couldn't move them, hmm. and they also, that was because it was wasn't this, connected to a movie. Uh, I think the interest on the kid level may have not been there, you know, like hmm. based yeah. on the distance between you know what happened with uh, Return of the Jedi, and they're putting this in between, and then prequels are coming out at a later date. The kids just weren't there, and I don't know that. I mean, there's a handful of adults who go out and buy toys, right? Cameron and I do it all the time. <laughs> but I don't know if the interest is there. So they're very, very available, though. I've looked for them. You could buy almost full sets for under $200. Oh, wow. Nice. How many figures are there then, roughly, for this? Uh, off the top of my head, I think there's six figures, and there's a few that – another two or three that come with ships and then some double packs. Ah. So all in all, there might be somewhere around 12 or so. 
Nice. Dash is a, is a card in the X-Wing game, too. Yeah. Oh, really? That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, That's cool. Yeah. And it's uh, it, the tabletop game. So he's he's in there. He's in the mix. So you brought him forward in time now. Nice. Yeah. So, there, I mean, there there has been hints dropped of him. So he is sort of considered canon. Like, hmm. he's in the canon timeline. But the thing, the problem is, is when Disney took over, a lot of stuff they've done no longer fits the book. Perfect example, the Vosh character, how hmm. Leia got the costume. The book tells you one thing, but Disney tells you another thing. So in uh, Disney, she got it from Maz Kanata. Yeah. Right? If you watch... Uh, Oh, what was the name? They have the shorts where it's all female characters. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Forces of Destiny. Forces of Destiny, yes. Thanks, James. Forces of Destiny, Maz Kanata actually gives her that costume in one of the episodes as to where in the <laughs> book, Chewbacca and Leia dress in those costumes for a different purpose, and that's how she ends up with it. I guess so. some of those things we, we could see beyond if it was to become a canon again officially. But uh, could. the main story itself, what, what do you think? Could that be weaved into it? I, absolutely. I think, mm. I mean, the main story could totally be weaved in right exactly where it belongs, right in between Empire yeah, yeah. and Jedi. Yeah. I mean, there's some cut, there's some deleted scenes in Jedi that are actually from the book. You can go yeah. watch them on YouTube. Luke Skywalker yeah. assembling his lightsabers directly yeah. out of the book. That's right. Yeah, so I think they'd still fit. To this day, they could still fit. I mean, it'd be a minor tweak or here, but you could right. get them in there. But do you, do yeah. you know what my my favorite part of that whole franchise was? What's that? What's that? The twenty four hundred, the Outrider, the YT twenty four hundred. The Outrider, the YT twenty four hundred. Oh. Yes. It was like the Millennium Falcon, just yep. kind of. I'm not going to say cooler because I love the. I, I obviously love the Falcon, but yes, it, it was just like <laughs> the the cool I uncle do. maybe. There's an appearance in the in the Rebels. You yep. can see it in the Rebels. Yeah. Ah, okay. I like seeing Iron, that ship and the Millennium together. Iron you know? Squadron flies yeah. in. Yeah. I would love the Bad Bats to, to to drop their current ship, which I don't like at all. That's just me. Yeah. Get rid Backwards of that. wings. <laughs> and find yourself a, a 2400, boys. You know, use that. That's cool. That's what that would be Man very cool. Mando needs a new ship. He does. Yes. Ooh, that would be cool, wouldn't it? That'd start be sending emails. Cool. Yep. I'm yep. going to start writing your letters. <laughs> Everyone start your petitions. <laughs> Make it happen, Fadlo. <laughs> right? Yes. Cameron, speaking of figures and all, um, I, don't you have some in the garage with you? I do. Um, <laughs> I play Legion. So, yeah, I, I paint figures and... Um, buildings and whatnot i don't have any of the buildings out but yeah i have some ah. of the figures i play empire um i have this guy right here one of my favorites oh, very beautiful very nice the the most recent ones i actually did weren't even um empire though i mean i did gin yes, sir. um nice. i don't know if you know this guy his name's james i mean and <laughs> And then yes, uh, yeah, one of my door. personal favorites. Ah, uh, K2. So yeah, are those 3D prints or how do you? Uh, these are uh, official models for the game. Oh, okay. Um, ah, right. There's a bunch of 3D prints out there. In mm, fact, right. I do have um, this one is a 3D print that I, I had Boba, Boba Fett. Fett. I didn't use them that much. Yeah, Where's so I, I liked I actually like Boba Fett better fat. I don't know why. Yeah. It just it makes him Ooh. more badass. Oh, did it's you more, yeah, it's a more realistic character, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, shows, yeah. It, it shows character progression, doesn't it? Yeah. Development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What he moans about and the then, lack of development. Nice. I don't know if you can see that one. Oh yeah. Yeah, that cool. one's a 3D print with a pin for a lightsaber. This is oh, resin, yeah. right? Resin printed. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's the only way to do that, that Beautiful. type of scale yeah. with, the, yeah. with the detail, the amount of detail. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I do paint some other figures, but um, I, the ones I like, the, the game itself is great, but the models are incredible. So nice. I, that's, it's, it's a hobby too. So Yeah, I can only imagine how the, uh, the ships and everything look. I mean, that speeder bike looked really nice. Well, I might have uh, ATSD around here somewhere. Ooh. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Show us. 
Yeah. You want me to grab it? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do it. Show and tell. Like now, of course, there. this is going to be for, you know, anyone who's listening to the podcast, obviously, if you come over to the YouTube channel, you'll see all these things that Cameron's bringing on screen. Me and Cameron have actually been chatting about this because I, I want to play it with, with my son, my youngest mm. son. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to, I'm hoping to 3D model a few things as well for um, for Cameron, some little little buildings to print out. He's going to he's gonna test those oh. out and paint them. It's, uh, it's, funny, James. it's funny, James. Our little guys are still in sync. My little guy's been wanting to do that now too. Awesome. And actually, I mean, I'll nice. grab something real quick. A little Tauntaun. Who's on the Tauntaun? Tauntaun. That, I painted it as Han, but it's not actually Han. Ah, okay. That's amazing. And then yeah. this one, crazy, uh, because of where I store it, the top of it comes Ooh. off. That is nice. That wow. is beautiful. And, uh, that comes off. Ah, magnetic, so, huh? Yeah, I did a little magnetized in there. And then the was, base. Was that, was that pre-painted finish? Did you, did you paint that? Oh no! It comes just in it comes generic. Out. It comes in a generic gray, and then you get to paint it however you really want. And I wow. actually, there's a, a Facebook group that just does Legion, and I put it out there, going, "Should I put a stripe down the front?" And everyone's like, "No, leave it alone. <laughs> Stop messing with it. Leave it alone." Because right. eyes red as well, you know. Exactly. Yeah. On Monday. <laughs> Yeah, there there is a guy on there that did one from uh, the Mandalorian. It looks beautiful, but mm, okay. yeah, it was like leave it alone, leave it alone. So I left right, <laughs> that's like a perfect segue into like doing weathering for builds too. If you start off with models like that, mm. yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Get to learn all the different techniques like dry brushing and definitely the silver marker, silver sharpie. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes, that's like revolutionary. There's a video out there about about silver sharpies weathering, you know. Is there? Mm. I gotta see that video. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a really good one about laser etched flooring out there as well, somewhere. But mm. Mm. I've heard about that. There is laser etched <laughs> flooring is out there. <laughs> yep. Well, I've actually, just, I've actually discovered somebody on the builders group who used the laser etched flooring tutorial and made their own laser etched floor. Wow. Ah, okay. Nice. Mm. Yeah, I questioned where he got it from. Oh, I saw that. That's the, uh, yes. the orange Star Trekky looking door with the, the crew. Correct. Ah, that's, yes. that's been, I saw that's that. Been, uh, yeah, that, that was good. Yeah. I, I zoomed in on that to check out. It was done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, good. I did too because I wanted to see what it was. It doesn't look laser etched, but when you get up on it, it I mean, it's a one, It's a great job. Hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So, Ron, uh, I was going to show you one quick thing. Yep. You know what this is, right? Hold on. I can hardly see. Oh, yes. I know exactly what that is. So, I throw these away, right? I'm sure you do too. All the time. My little guy goes and pulls it out of the trash and says, hey, it's the perfect cave for his wampa. Brilliant. It does. It, yeah, it fits right? perfectly, right? When I looked at that, I was like, uh, proud dad. That's, great. That's when you can just sit back and go. Yeah. My parenting. Exactly. I was like. It's successful. Yep. So now, of course, you know, little... you can't throw out any more, any more uh, styrofoam or anything like that. It's got to all no, stay now. no. He asked me for a hot knife, so we're going to work on that next. Yep. yep. Way up there, you can see yeah. some styrofoam. Yeah. <laughs> yep, keep that. Styrofoam is gold. Cameron, you know, we've asked you a ton of questions. Did you have any questions for us? I, I, I did have some, but one is really standing out. Uh oh James, is there anything you do not do? Uh, <laughs> that's a popular question. That is a popular question. Is it? Um, there are <laughs> tons of things I do not do. I don't play Legion. I can't paint characters like you. I'm terrible at painting. Yeah. Um, there's loads of things. That, what, what kind of a quest is that? There's loads of things I can't do. <laughs> is this because I put pictures of the baking cakes and the icing them on my Facebook? Maybe that's no. what it is. I don't wow. Baking no. cakes while playing the piano. <laughs> Exactly. While cutting foam to make it look like something that's anything but foam. <laughs> and composing a new soundtrack. Yeah. I'm just, and, just yeah. A, I'm just creative and I just like doing, I just like creating yeah. stuff, really. And yeah, I think yeah. it's awesome. But yeah, I'm, I'm um, no more talented than the, than the next guy. But thanks. Okay. So next question is for everyone, except me. When are you guys going to get together and start a design group that goes to people's houses and builds all this stuff? 
That is an uh, interesting question. Um, I've had some people at my job actually ask me, um, one person's actually building a house and she's like, we have one room designated as the Star Wars room and you're the guy that's going to come over and, and do all the design work for it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And then another person on top of that actually asked me first uh, if, if, if we would go out to his house and then he'd kind of show me the room, I you know, take some measurements and kind of mock it up and just show him what it could look like. So there's that. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Cameron, Ron and I are getting together in October for a Comic-Con. That'll be the topic of discussion at dinner. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Mm. Meanwhile, That's I'll awesome. be 9,000 miles away. Ah, you could come on over. To yeah, you can come on over. <laughs> <laughs> you're, the, you're the UK branch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm holding it together over here. Don't you guys worry. It's fine. <laughs> I got this. Now, everyone noticed it took two of us and only one of him. So once again... He's doing right. it all. Is there, anything, <laughs> is there anything you can do? <laughs> if people want to see your artwork and your comics and everything, where might they find you? Um, YouTube under Sketchy Guy Nevada or NV, Sketchy Guy NV. Um, also on uh, social media under Sketchy Guy Nevada or the real Sketchy Guy Nevada, depending on where you are, usually Twitter. Um, so yeah, they can reach out. I enjoy talking to people and drawing so challenges are usually accepted if i have time Ask reach out say hi. <laughs> so you said the, the the real is that like the real ghostbusters versus the regular ghostbusters or yes all right no okay. if you do a search if you do a search for sketchy guy you start seeing guys in trench coats i don't it's not it's like, yeah I, 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 in, the, in the uk we we have a saying it's a bit sketch do you say yeah. that as well yeah. yeah, yeah, mm. at least you know I do now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever you, know what you say, meant. James, <laughs> I'm gonna do it now. It's sketchy. He's gonna it's write sketchy. it into law, so you better watch out. You can know. do that. I need to speak to Liz first, though, see if she agrees. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> that's the queen, by the way. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, I, I've, been, I've been watching The Crown, I'm up to date. Yeah, I mean, you nice. should watch Pepper Pig. It's much more accurate when it comes oh. to the screen. <laughs> I've got every episode memorized. Yeah. Wow. It's we talked about Pepper going. Pig on the Almost Star Wars show. It happened here. You saw it. Yeah. And for Next those who don't know music. who that is, yep, we, uh, I'll put a post up, a picture up right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, by the way, I did, um, I when I was doing the, the uh, when I was listening to the, the Shadows of the Empire did draw Dash in the swoop scene where he oh, saves yes. Luke. Yes, yes. And I'll, you know, send you the link so you can share that if you like. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Because you, you're going to actually put that on your channel pretty soon, aren't you? Um, yeah, I'm going to do it in like two weeks. So Nice. Okay. Cool. You guys we'll wait have for you to do that. Access. Premier access to Premier Dash access. Rendar. Two weeks from the airing of this show. Cool. Damn, cool. that's so organized. Yes. I, you know what? <laughs> I bet I bet you're one of those guys that, that names all of your layers as well, right? You you name all of your layers in Photoshop. No, and... <laughs> I actually don't. And then I have to find them. I do the same really thing. Sucks. It's more, and they're little tiny little pictures. So I'm like, uh, that yeah. one, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And then I'll it's hide it. So I, okay, that's sure. I'm sure that's the one. That's the one that was hidden. Let me unhide it and now work on that. And then okay. when you see them. When you save the file, it's new one, new one, 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 final, final, yes. one, one, one. Yep. Yep. I actually, since, okay. So recently my iPad crashed. Mm -hmm. So the old iPad, it won't work with the drawing programs. And I was getting frustrated because when I'm editing videos, all the videos were like that. It's like new video one, new <laughs> video two, new video three, or one, 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 nine, 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 whatever. Um, so when I got the new iPad, I only have like 12 of them on there. So I went and I renamed all of them to what they were. So there is a rebel base build and there's a CG artist. And there's so a you black are that guy. Post. I am now. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, James has presented a challenge for us or for everyone. So you can put this in the comments as well. Um, we want you to try to find a control panel. In the original trilogy, it looks like anything from Galaxy's Edge or the newer movies. I just think there's a bit of a disconnect, isn't there? You, know, you walk around the Galaxy's uh, Edge, you know, you see um, 
those data pads and all those things all over the place that we accept as Star Wars. Try and find something that looks like that in the original three films. Yeah, I don't I don't think you can. I don't think so either. The big craze down there is everybody's got their cell phone covers looking like a data pad because they have that interactive game that Mm -hmm. works with the data pads that James happens to be talking about, but you can't find those in any of the movies. Like that one there. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't like them. I, I, they look awesome, and they still feel Star Warsy. But yes. mm-hmm. it's just that if, if we're creating, if the idea of uh, Batu and, and that was to to sort of fit within what we've accepted to be Star Wars, are we saying that the the visuals have changed that much since the original trilogy era? I, I don't know. But let's see. Well, let's see if you can find it. If we were in the same like areas, I think it would stand out more. But because mm. they they're going to different places, maybe. And yeah. a borrowed universe, everything kind of still looks the same, but could be a little bit different depending on the region, right? I think on, on Tatooine, there's a, a circular control panel. I think it's at the cantina. Mm. And it's got four little LED square lights in it. And that's probably the closest thing you're going to get to the aesthetic that you see now as the accepted Star Wars kind of format mm. in terms of control panels and stuff. I think the... Empire control panels are fairly consistent, but I'm yeah. not talking about that look. I'm talking about the data pads that you see and that general feel that we, we feel as Star Wars now. You try and find those those things in the original trilogy. Or the prequels, even. Mm, yeah, absolutely. You can start to see it in Rogue One and, and the newer movies, but yeah. And we'll maybe see... Uh, prove it wrong. Yeah, maybe we'll see what's uh, whatever's next. Maybe we'll start to see them in there as well. I don't remember seeing any in, in Solo. How about you guys? I don't think mm-hmm. those were there. I'd imagine they probably would be since it's modern Star Wars, but right. didn't didn't really stick out. I know they had a lot of um, mini screens with, with that nice kind of Empire-like uh, surround around the screen, which you yes. see on the Star Destroyers quite a bit. So they did, they did well on picking up on some of those things. But uh, you know, like you know, I'm talking about those kind of the data pad with the frames around it and the right, right. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely a more modern thing. I mean, you, you can see quite a few of them in the Mandalorian series as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's walking in and out of all those buildings on Navarro. Every one of those yeah. data pads are somewhat drawn from the uh, newer versions. Nah, yeah, okay. and they're cool. I, I love them. Don't don't get me wrong. I love them, and I'm I'm creating stuff like that for my room build as well. But it just struck me as interesting that that was not right. what the original aesthetic was. That's cool, funny. cool. Well, Cameron, once again, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hopefully we didn't scare you away forever and you'll stop drawing things for everybody. And everyone, thank you for joining us for this episode and we will see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you.